Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Mobile Access Revolution, the End of Slow VPN and Users' Complaints. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. You're welcome to submit questions at any time using the chat window on the right-hand side of your screen, and we'll go over all the questions at the end of the webinar. And of course, there will be a recording of this webcast available within a couple of days. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Adrian Dunn, Global Director of IT at Adderall, and Ophira Gossi, Director of Product Marketing at Cato Networks. Adrian has over 16 years of experience in the IT industry managing everything from large multinational corporations to small tech startups. Ophir has over 12 years of network security expertise in systems engineering, product management, and research and development. Before we get started, I'd like to submit our first poll question. What is your biggest challenge regarding mobile users' access to business applications? You can mark all or any that apply. Slow response time to data center applications. Slow response time to cloud data centers. Slow response to cloud applications like Office 365 or Salesforce. Complex configuration and operation of mobile clients. Or lack of visibility and control to what users are accessing, also known as shadow IT. You can start answering now. All right, we'll give it just a couple more seconds here. All right, great, thank you everybody. Ophir, please get us started. Thank you, Bonnie. So today we're gonna to talk about the challenge of connecting mobile users to corporate resources like uh, on-premise applications located on your data centers, cloud resources like Amazon, AWS, Microsoft Azure, or any SaaS application. And mainly we'll focus about the challenge of controlling the connectivity, actually providing um, um, good performance, um, some predictable uh, latency and packet loss that allows the users to use application without complaining about bad performance and the application to not perform well. Um, we're also um, going to talk about security and visibility, which are very important to, uh, to, every, to every organization with mobile workforce. Uh, who can connect to where? How do they do that? From which devices? How do I onboard those users uh, to the company's resources? Uh, what are we doing with contractors, um, with users that need multiple devices, and so on. So there are many challenges to talk about, starting from the connectivity the, the, uh, itself, going all the way to security and visibility, you as an IT, of, of your workforce. Um, when we look on, on typical organizations today, uh, there is usually a lot of branches, and obviously the headquarters with some sort of a, of a firewall. and uh, which is connected, it can connect directly um, to the internet. We see a lot of organizations that create an IPsec tunnel from their office uh, firewall to Amazon uh, AWS or to Azure in order to secure the connection between the, the main site to uh, their cloud data center. The problem starts with the mobile users and the question, how do I connect them to a, my on-premise of application, and B, to all those uh, cloud applications, and, and how do I secure them on, on, the, on, the, on the go? So we see companies that uh, what usually that kind of a good practice, if you don't have any other solution for that, is to back all traffic from the mobile users by VPN. So basically, they open a VPN tunnel from the mobile device to the on-premise firewall, and all traffic goes via your on-premise firewall. Uh, the problem with that is if they go to the, um, to the cloud, if they need to go to Office 65 or if they need to access your Amazon data center, it creates a thrombone effect uh, that really jeopardizes performance, especially if you're a global organization when all users from around the world need to connect to your uh, central location in order to access uh, your business application. It's, it's a big challenge 
for performance and actually managing that complexity. The second part of that approach of backhauling is that it's created a choke point on your uh, on your firewall, on your on-premise on perimeter, uh, sorry, on your perimeter firewall, because lots of users now are connecting to your firewall, choking your existing bandwidth, your internet bandwidth, and you don't have any uh, redundancy to that uh, traffic, to that access. Because if something happens to your firewall, uh, even if you have AJ, still, if something happened to your last mile, your connectivity, your on-site connectivity, it means that all your users around the world cannot access business application. Your organization is completely shut down, which actually um, is really risky to any organization. Um, another problem of mobile users, and again, it really talks about global uh, scenarios when you have users all over the world that need to access your Amazon or SaaS application. Um, when you like, when you install business application on your uh, on-premise data center, people need to access it. And if it happens on the public internet, you do not control performance. Uh, same goes for if you move to the cloud. When you choose Office 365, or Amazon, you need to specify where the data center is located. Usually, it, you will choose a location near your headquarters. So if you're a North America West Coast company, you'll choose the data center close to you. So your India uh, employees, your employees from India, your employees from uh, uh, Germany or wherever they are in the world, they will need to access the data center, their applications uh, in the West Coast. So performance is unpredictable. How do they access it? How do you make sure that it works smoothly 24 hours a day? The, the last problem is obviously the security part. When mobile users go and travel, or they work from home, or if they're traveling employees, um, basically when they leave the premise, they need to access those application and they just bypass the whole corporate network security stack. Um, unless you, again, deploy another third-party solution that adds complexity to the network. So this whole combination of how users access those applications, how do I secure them, and the approaches, uh, at the end of the day, if it's direct, it's not secure, if uh, you have latency issues on the public internet, if you're backhauling, you have a lot of performance issues and redundancy and uh, choke point uh, uh, constraints. So, Really, for large-scale organization or even even smaller ones, this approach will not work. So, what Kato Networks, and we're going to talk about mobility. We're going to showcase and show how, how one of our customers moved away from that approach of backhauling traffic uh, and to allow mobile users to access his cloud application. Uh, I'm going to show and talk a little bit about what Kato is doing to solve the problem, and this is kind of an overall. Uh, overview of Cato before we deep dive into the mobile scenario. It's really important to understand that we're doing a lot more than mobile. Mobile is, is one of the use cases that we solve. Our global network that I'll deeply describe in a few minutes will show how we actually uh, optimize mobile traffic, secure it, and allow granular visibility and, uh, into users' actions. So the way we uh, in Cato decided to solve this problem of connecting business elements like headquarters, branch, cloud data centers, and mobile users is by creating a cloud network. We have a global network, which is SLA-backed. It means that performance is guaranteed. Uh, that actually allows companies that use MPLS to get off the MPLS, eliminate it, and move to a cheaper capacity with a managed backbone. And I'll describe exactly what it means uh, on the next slides. But basically, we've created a global network that all users and resources connect to it, wherever they are in the world. And then once we have all this traffic runs and consolidated in the cloud, we run a full security stack on our cloud network that allows you to set a single policy for both your WAN access, users accessing different resources and the, and when they access cloud. It also allows you to secure them. So it's a full firewall as a service that uh, allows the runs with a single policy for WAN access and internet access. 
So we see those three pillars, the network, the security, and the policy, and I want to deep dive and, and kind of explain how this uh, magic works. Uh, we'll start off with the first pillar, which is the network pillar. And I want to explain when we say a global SLA-backed network, what do we mean by that? Uh, Kato Networks built a full network that uh, start off by our POPs. Uh, a POP is a point of presence and it runs our software. We, are, we spread globally. We have footprint all over the world and I'll show you our global footprint uh, on the next slide. We have a, a very nice map to show that we are very close to all of our customers and meaning that each one of our customers connect to the closest POP to him. Uh, those POPs run only software. There are no routers, no switches, no third-party solution. Everything was written by us from the ground up to adjust and to scale to a cloud environment. So the whole network stack, routing, um, optimization, runs on our network in software. The, each one of our POPs connect to the others, what we call intern, interconnectivity, uh, to create a full mesh, so all POPs connect to one another using tier one carriers, tier one providers, in, and the fact that we're actually using two of them. The reason for that is we want to overcome the unpredictability of the public internet. When we take packet from one side of the wall over our backbone to the other uh, side of the wall, it goes on a single carrier where we are, have SLA on performance. So we're not using the public internet and meaning that there, there is no predictability. Um, so how do we connect the, your business resources to the Kato cloud? So as I said, pop, our pops are spread around the world. And for your physical location, um, we have two op options. The first one, if you're using uh, a perimeter firewall, uh, you, can, you can open an IPsec tunnel from your firewall to the nearest Kato pop. And then you route all the traffic from your site to uh, the, the closest pop. The other option is, uh, and actually we call that option a firewall elimination, because later on we'll talk about the fact that our network also consolidated the security stack. So it allows you to eliminate the need of firewall and configuration of IPsec tunnels and so on. We allow it uh, to replace that with a device called a Kato socket. The Kato socket is a, is a small low touch device. It's a tunneling device. The, it's the size of the human hand and it can route up to one gig of encrypted traffic. So traffic goes from your branch, from the local socket on your branch, all the way to the nearest pop. And the socket allows you to choose the pop that is closest to you, meaning lower latency, lower packet loss rate. So you can choose either your firewall, your, the socket, but when customers that choose our, uh, chooses our socket, um, which is our, also our SD-WAN device, the sockets control uh, full SD-WAN capability. It means policy-based routing, active-active on two last mile ISPs, uh, a lot of uh, optimization capabilities for the last mile. So we, can, we actually improve your last mile connection if you replace your firewall with the socket. So all traffic uh, can actually better perform when you access either WAN resources or the internet. The third resource that we allow is to connect a cloud data center. It can be Amazon AWS, it can be a Microsoft Azure data center, wherever they are in the world, we see them like another site. So we have a virtual version of the socket that you can install on premise, but we actually support something simpler than that, and I'll demonstrate it later on on our demos, uh, that allows you with, without any client, just to open an IPsec tunnel from the Kato pop to your Amazon VPC or to your Azure instance. Basically, it means that we see any cloud data center, any VPC you have, doesn't matter which provider, it can be a multi-provider, and we just see them as another site. And I'll show how the policy and how it simplifies everything. So if you think about it, when you want to connect 
multiple users to multiple cloud data centers, you don't need to think about the, a complex mesh configuration that at the end, probably everybody needs some sort of access to everywhere. With us, it's a single connection from the resource. It could be a branch, it could be headquarters. And then by policy, you just need to decide where they can, uh, where they are allowed to, to access. The last part is, uh, which is very relevant or what our, our webinar is all about, our mobile client. And we see a lot of demand from that from our existing customers when usually they have some sort of a VPN connection, um, VPN client that allows them WAN access. So they open a VPN to their firewall, but all, all the security capabilities are kind of disappear. So they only rely on a, um, an agent on the machine. And in many cases, our customers complain about visibility and the whole manageability of mobile users. With us, mobile users, we have a, a, a Kato client. It's a VPN client for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and, uh, and Linux that allows you to connect them to the nearest pop to them. So basically, they just open a single uh, VPN tunnel from wherever they are in the world to the closest pop to them, and they route both the WAN and internet traffic via Kato. So they become part of the network wherever they are, and we'll talk about the security and the, and the policy in, uh, on the next slide, but now you, can, you have a better understanding that our global network allows you to connect all those mobile users. It can be traveling users. You can be a global organization with users all around the world. But you as an organization now allow them to install a single agent, a single client, that connects them to a very close pop to them. And I'll talk about uh, what it means to connect to the close pop on the next slide. But they're connecting to it, and that's it. They have full access to all the resources on your WAN cloud or physical, and they get security. This is a, um, a kind of a illustration of our cloud network. We have uh, 34, 34 pops around the world. You can see our uh, deployment right now. We are extending this network on a weekly base. The idea is that we want to be as far as 25 milliseconds from every one of our customers mobile user or a physical location. So if you have users in India, they will connect to our pop in Mumbai and immediately they are part of your network. If you have user in, in London, in UK, they will connect to our London pop. And again, immediately they are part of the network. And all of these pops are, as I said, connected to one another. There's a full mesh that we are taking care of. This is the Kato backbone. It's it's very important part of our network and allow me to explain why we, where I mention this SLA back backbone all the time, because it's actually what improves the performance and reliability of your network. Um, if you think about um, your network, you have mobile users around the world, or it could be physical location, it doesn't really matter, and they need to access some resources. So the further away those resources are from um, those users are away from those resources, uh, the longer it will take them to reach them. So um, latency will be longer. If some sort of an error happens and there are packet loss or high latency due to routing issues, uh, it will take long time for the users to recover from uh, all those TCP uh, or UDP issues like packet loss, again, routing, I'm, I'm mentioning that again, because uh, at the end, this is what this will what will uh, impact your application performance. We're talking about voice, video streaming, access to email, uh, or any business application that you use. With Kato, uh, as I mentioned, our pops are designated to be as far as 25 milliseconds away from our users. So our clients are smart enough to measure the network to understand where they are and connect to the closest pop to them with the v with VPN uh, tunnel. And so that's the pop selection. It's really important because if some of the pops are better performing or if you have a better route to your resources, the Kato client will be able to choose the, the best pop for you. 
The second part is the encryption. So as I said, it's a full VPN. The clients encrypt the traffic, everything that goes between, uh, actually it's an end-to-end -end encryption, but at this part, the encryption goes between the VPN client to the nearest pod. So now when all the traffic goes from the user to the pod, now go the second part, which is the middle mile, the optimization that we run on our SLA back backbone. So it's a global network, it's a global footprint. Think about like a premium connectivity um, that allows us to optimize performance. We run a full TCP proxy on each one of our pops. So when one of our pops receives packet and realize some uh, errors occurred on this packet or there are some packet loss, it allows us to fast, faster recover from those errors. Or um, it actually, with forward error correction, with FEC, allows us to recover automatically from those errors. So the POPs will try to recover from the error automatically without asking the user to retransmit the request. But if, if it, it's not able to do that, what happens is that the POP automatically ask the user to retransmit. So think about it, if we are at 25 milliseconds, we're very close to the user, uh, and we realize some error happened, we will ask the user to read the, the application to retransmit the packet again. It reduces the time, it will take the packet to go to the other side of the wall, and then back, and then back again to, uh, to send the original packet. So running a full TCP proxy, allows us to maximize the capacity, the throughput that the user has or your site, and allow us to recover from errors. This is the, a very important optimization that we run between our, uh, our pops. And here we only see two, two pops but as you saw before, it's a full network. When we take packets from one side to the other side of the world, we are always measuring the most optimal route and the, and the idea is to bring, to take traffic on the fastest path that we have, or that is available from this, for this uh, uh, destination. The second part of the optimization that we run on, on the user traffic is kind of um, express route, direct connect, uh, premium uh, services solution without the high cost of them. So if you think about what uh, Microsoft and, uh, and uh, Amazon have done, they created some services because they understand that since you do not control latency and packet loss, when you want to access their data centers, you need to, they need to provide some, opt, some uh, premium connectivity. So they offer those uh, services. We actually offer an alternative. When the users connect to our pops and we take them to the other side of the world, we will drop the packet on the pop that is closest to your data center. We call it Eager's IP. So you can say that all your Office 365, all your users' Office 365 traffic will be dropped on our pop in uh, Ashbourne or Dallas or wherever your data center is. So we are co-locating on the same data centers as all of the SaaS providers, the YAS providers, so traffic will go from the user to, our, to the nearest pop, and then on the fastest path, on, the, on our backbone, on the Kato backbone, will go all the way to the data center, and we will drop it right in front of your, uh, your provider. So it's really important. It's actually, we're going we're gonna to see a demo later on, how we improve the performance of Office 365 40 or 70 times more than what the public internet provides. Um, and the last part is if you need to access one resources on your physical data center, and again, it can be um, users or site-to-site -site connectivity. On the last mile, when we deploy a socket, it allows us uh, actually a lot more capabilities, like running multiple carriers, inactive actives, quality of service. So all the core SD-WAN are integrated into the service. So we are optimizing the connection end-to-end. -end. So this multi-segment optimization is something very unique that allows your mobile users to experience a better performance, better application uh, uh, experience, and so on.
We talked about the network uh, quite heavily because it's really important to understand that all the traffic, we are taking all the traffic and we are optimizing it end to end. Both the WAN and the internet traffic goes from your resources, users and physical ones via the Kato backbone and into the destination, over to the destination. So once we have all this traffic consolidated in our cloud, in the Kato network, we've built a full network stock in, uh, in our network. So we call it a firewall as a service. We're the first firewall as a service, if you think about it, because we don't inspect and secure just your north-south traffic, users going to uh, the internet. We also see the WAN traffic, and that makes us very unique uh, in the market, in the industry. So we build a next generation firewall with identity awareness, uh, application awareness, URL filtering, everything is built into the, into the platform. We have uh, anti-malware, IPS, and a lot of uh, advanced security capabilities are coming into the service. What makes this firewall the service or what we offer so unique is when we add a new capability, a new signature, a new uh, uh, protection to the users, as a, customer, as a customer, you don't need to do anything to enable it, to use it. There are no upgrades, no downtime, no maintenance. Basically, you just need to decide if you want to use it or not, because we're taking care of all the infrastructure. I spoke earlier about firewall elimination. Uh, one of the reasons to, to eliminate the firewall is all the complexity of managing it. Um, the, cap the capacity limitation, um, the upgrades, and so on. We take the, all this headache off our customers. We run everything in our cloud, and which makes it very unique. So think about your mobile users. When they connect to our uh, network, wherever they are in the world, um, you can enforce the same security policy, the same security uh, tools that you have on when they are in the corporate, when they are on the go, when they work from their home office, when they're traveling, uh, whatever you need, actually they are connecting to Kato and they get the same security capabilities. It's really unique. Uh, the last part is the policy. Uh, as I mentioned, we have, we have both WAN access policy, users can access X, Y, and Z policies or not. Uh, you get a firewall access policy, which URL they're allowed to use, which application, what happened if they and try to download a malicious file, file and so on. So everything you would expect from a firewall, a WAN, an internet firewall, is already integrated. Uh, and think about it. You have a single policy for everything, your users, for, for cloud data center, for physical location uh, protection. Um, it's, it simplifies the whole operation, the whole complexity of uh, managing everything. So, uh, Bonnie, I think we've reached to our uh, second poll. Yes, thank you, Ophir. How do you connect your mobile workforce to cloud resources and applications? We force all mobile traffic into our DC firewall, like a VPN. We force all traffic through a cloud firewall. Or we let users go directly to the cloud. You can start answering now. Okay, we'll give it just a couple more seconds here. All right, thanks everybody. Now I'd like to hand it over to our customer, Adrian, for his Cato success story. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, my name is Adrian Dunn. I'm the Global Director of IT for AdRoll, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, our success story with Cato. So AdRoll is a retargeting company. We are about 500 to 550 full-time employees, and then we have contractors um, spanning the, uh, the entire globe. Um, we're here's a here's a quick overlay of our our locations our infrastructure so our headquarters are based out of san francisco um we're predominantly we keep everything in the cloud 
We have a very small footprint in our server rooms. We try and run it very lean, just firewalls, switches. And then all of our, all of our business is done via AWS um, and, and cloud computing. You can see we have we've quite a large footprint globally. We've, as I said, headquarters in San Francisco, offices in New York, two in London, or two in Europe, Dublin, London. Um, we have a presence in Tokyo, in Sydney, and then we have contractor locations, predominantly in India, Mexico, Argentina. So we've quite a quite a, a large global presence, and obviously we have we have all the challenges that come with those global solutions and having different types of employee um, permission levels that we need to satisfy. Um, so to to give you guys an idea of what our traditional VPN uh, infrastructure looked like, um, we, we started off with a very standardized having a, a firewall in, in our headquarters location, San Francisco, um, and then having a traditional um, uh, site to site VPN solution off of that, uh, off of that firewall. So we, we predominantly have our, our AWS um, VPCs based in North America, and we connect directly to those um, with a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel from San Francisco. But we, we built, the solution that we built out and the solution that I, that I inherited when, when I joined AdRoll was that all of our, look, all of our um, employees, our clients, um, contractors, sorry, we're all talking back to our San Francisco uh, firewall. And so there are several challenges that we experienced um, because of this uh, infrastructure build-up. Um, obviously, if you're located in, a, in a, a different continent, you have latency issues that arise from the fact that you've got to go and talk back to San Francisco um, before your secure connection. Um, you also have problems around um, the different permission levels with uh, contractors and full-time employees and managing that solution. Um, San Francisco was a single point of failure, so we had a lot of challenges with um, uptime there and it had a massive global impact whenever we, um, we had issues uh, at that site. And also we experienced a lot of, like there was a lack of granular security and visibility around our AWS solution. So in, in essence, it was it was quite a poor setup. Um, there wasn't over there wasn't geo redundancy. There wasn't um, you know a, a good example that I give is when we moved our San Francisco office, we basically treated our firewall like it was a a heart transplant, and and we ran it across town in like you know ten fifteen minutes, and and it was very much a case of that. It was it was this was our baby, and we had to protect it, and we didn't have the correct. Uh, redundancies or, or just we weren't matching the solution that we were doing with everything else in the company where it was in the cloud, it, it could easily be adapted for each location um, and it was very, uh, we had this very granular ability to, um, uh, to build it out the way we needed to based on permissions and, and user roles and whatnot. So we went into the market and we, we um, you know, we started looking at uh, what we really needed to solve for here, and, and we used the model that we've used on our our entire you know business model, IT model before that is is based on the cloud, getting as many things as we can into the cloud, so that we're not we're not laboring our, our local server rooms, we're not um, needing to have um, members of our IT team bogged down by keeping servers up, so on and so forth. We wanted a, a, a solution that was simple, easy for the end user to, to understand and connect to. Um, we wanted to optimize the uh, environment that we had. We needed to have it be global, so we needed to be able to know that our team members in India were not connecting all the way across the world um, to, to secure that VPN connection. We wanted to have nodes close to them so that the, that connection and that latency was short. Um, we obviously needed um, a lot more redundancy and, and the, the need to know that if, if one node went down, that it was easily, um, easily um, uh, accommodated by other nodes. Um, 
And, and because we're a 24 hour business, that was, that was critical to us, the redundancy side of it. And then obviously, given that it's a VPN tunnel, we needed to, to make sure it was secure. So we, we, um, we ended up uh, landing on Cato. And Cato was the ideal solution for us because just touching on what I mentioned before, it, it really it gave us all of the aspects of what we were trying to build up. It was versatile. It was nimble. It was easily, easily um, built out. The user experience was very positive. Um, we instantly solved our redundancy problems. Um, we were able to quickly connect directly into our VPCs uh, using IPsec. And we, we even, we got far more um, of a security footprint because of switching to Cato. Uh, we were able to um, get the granular permission levels that we needed um, when, we, when we gave out access to our AWS environment. We could manage things in terms of what protocols certain people were allowed to use, um, what IP addresses they were allowed to hit from. We could even go so far as saying they were allowed to hit this um, VPC just within these hours. So great, it gave us far more control. It gave our, um, our security team far more comfort. Um, and you know, it, it allowed us to basically have to look at our uh, VPN connection, whereby we could build out an office and have that talking directly into the Cato Cloud. End users coming into the Cato Cloud. We could manage everything through the Cato Cloud. We could even go so far as taking a single branch, removing our traditional firewall uh, needs and replacing them directly with a Cato socket. All of that functionality of, of uh, branch firewall needs um, edge protection is built into the Cato socket, so we were able to uh, easily uh, utilize that when we built out new branches. Uh, all in all, the, the, the redundancy that Cato provides, the flexibility, um, it, it just it was a huge win for us, and it, it, it turned what was a very nervous part of my um, infrastructure into something that just ran seamlessly and you know, very, very positive end user experience. So that, to conclude, um, you know, we, 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 took, we took the traditional, um, put a firewall in every office, have it talk directly using a, um, a VPN tunnel up to your cloud system. Um, but we, we took that and we, we stripped it away and we moved it just all into the cloud and we instantly got, as I mentioned, this, this flexibility, this adaptability, um, and this, you know, this positive end user client experience that we could never have got with uh, the hardware uh, servers that we, uh, or the firewalls that we were uh, traditionally using. So to give you a, a visual view of uh, our current environment with Cato, you can see we have all of our end users correct, connecting directly into the client. We also have branches uh, via our Cato sockets connecting directly into the, into the cloud, Cato cloud. Um, and then we have our VPCs within AWS also connecting directly in. So we have this very uniform um, central point that is in, in many ways completely not centralized in that it has a, a global footprint, it has nodes across the board, but we have, we have the perfect, um, we have the perfect insight into how everyone is connecting in, regardless of whether they're just a, a device or an entire branch, we're, we're getting that level of security, we know that our data is protected, and we have um, we have an excellent overview of of um, uh, how we're set up. So so Cato's been a huge success for us, and and we're delighted with the results. Thanks for sharing with us, Adrian. I have a quick question from our audience. Um, they're asking what feedback you get from the users and their user experience. Um, yeah, it's it's very positive. The you know the the setup within Cato is is quite easy. We have a, a centralized management system that we we assign uh, users 
um, permission levels based on their roles. We, we assign them into certain groups, which then define their, their permission levels. And on the end user side, they're simply downloading clients, adding in their credentials, and, and hitting connect. So, um, you know, it's, it's quite seamless. It's, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, laborious about the installation or getting them on Cato. And then once they're connected, it sort of just sits in the background and, do, and does the job without them being aware of it. Um, what's nice from our point of view is we've eliminated the conversation about, you know, I'm in India or I'm in Argentina and I'm, I'm getting terrible latency when I connect to, to the traditional VPN. Um, that, that jump all the way to San Francisco and then all the way back has been eliminated. They're connecting to the closest node that they're on. Um, or that they're beside, and so the 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 um, the experience is is sort of one that they're not aware that they're connected to it, um, which is you know in IT silence is the the greatest praise you can get. If no one's yelling at you, you should be pretty happy. Okay, great. Uh, all right, Ophir, you're up. Thank you, Adrian, and thank you, Bonnie. Um, so it's actually really interesting uh, how uh, AdRoll implemented Cato and uh, the, the whole story here is really, really unique and was, was really important for us to, to talk about it and show customers. This is an, an, a perfect example of a global customer um, with mobile users all over the world. They started off, uh, as, as Adrian described, uh, as a backhauling solution, everything backhauled to their San Francisco headquarters in order to access the cloud. So if you think about it, they were uh, a cloud-based company without the elasticity or the uh, agility of the cloud because everything had to back all. While, while Cato actually brought them back to the cloud experience when everything is fast, reliable, adjustable. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I want to show a few demos now um, that will kind of give you a better feeling of what we're talking about, show you that uh, and a few examples of the simplicity and the, and the optimization and the security uh, that we offer for your mobile workforce. We're starting off with a demo uh, which shows how you provision a user. Uh, this is a, actually also show how we run a, a multi-factor authentication. What you see here is the Cato management application, and this is uh, the Cato Cloud. This is an, a typical customer with many locations around the world. This is a global customer. And in this scenario, I'm just adding a new user to the system. You see, it's very simple, just user name uh, with email, with business email. You click OK, and that's it. I'll show you what happens in a few seconds, uh, how the user received a notification, how, and how they provision the device on first time, but first let's enable a multi-factor authentication for the user, save the, the configuration, and that's it. It took me two seconds to add a new user to the system. On the user side, this user is an iOS user. Um, the user received a, now a notification from Cato that, uh, and again, this is a first time onboarding flow for the user. The user clicked the link, and via a few steps, they need to provide a password, their phone number for multi-factor authentication. I'm going to use SMS here. So after providing the password, um, they, they save the configuration. We're going to verify that the user um, uh, phone number is actually the one he provided. So the user needs uh, the first thing to enter the, uh, his phone that where he wants us to send uh, the one-time verification code. So, and again, this is just to, for the first time. In a few seconds, I'll show you how it looks when on a daily operation. So you see the user received uh, the ver verification code, enters it into the client and uh, into the system, and that's it. Now we verify the user, his password, and his device. The second part is to install the Kato client on the device. They received a link uh, over in the email or in our website. So they go to the App Store, they download the iOS um, uh, client, and now they just need to enter credentials or to provide uh, uh, the, uh, 
the configuration, the profile configuration. So uh, when they click next, they use the basically um, iOS ask them to approve the VPN profile. Uh, the only thing that it does basically is configure the site, configure everything. And what you see here right now is that the user is connecting for the first time to Kato. So this is kind of the daily operation. You can configure how often they get those SMSs. They can do it, should they need do it every day or once a month. So the user connected to Kato and provided the two-factor authentication, and that's it. It's part of the network. As simple as that. The second demo will show um, one access or one configuration, policy configuration, when access to AWS uh, in Azure. Um, so in this network, we already have two instances of cloud data center, Microsoft Azure, uh, Amazon AWS. And what I'm showing here is how to set a rule to allow specific user to access those users. So I'm just adding a user. You can see the simplicity of the whole rule base. Um, now I need to decide, and again, it's going to integrate with um, your um, Active Directory, so it can be full groups. So the second part now is to add the destination. I chose AWS, I chose Azure, and you need, just need to save the configuration, as simple as that. So you can also go with more granularity, not to allow any service. In this example, I'm using a web server, so let's only allow HTTP. I can set it to limit only during working hours um, if, I want, if I choose to do that. So you can see the rule base here uh, and how simple it is to, uh, to allow users to access or to, to uh, ban them from using some kind of resources. It can go all the way down into your specific application, should or should they not be able to use them. Um, you can set it per VPC, per full environment. So the granularity is unlimited, and it's, it's, it's from a single place. It's, it's really powerful. You can see here these two uh, end errors that uh, uh, allows you to set bidirectional access, so you don't need to multiply the rules. Uh, the whole idea and the whole thinking behind our, our policy configuration is to simplify everything, to allow very easy granularity and, uh, uh, to what happened in the network. So now I've set a rule to allow this specific user to go to Azure and to AWS. These are two, two providers uh, of my data center, my cloud data center. So now let's see how access from the user side, from the end user, will look like. Wherever they are in the world, they just need to enable Kato, connect. You see now the user is connected. He's part, he received an internal IP address, so he's part of the Kato cloud. And I'm opening a browser. You can see on the upper left corner the VPN uh, notification. And I'm connecting now. I'm browsing to, to Amazon Web Server, to my web server on Amazon. Just click, go. Once I'm connected, I don't need to do anything. If now I want to access a different resource, a physical, or if it's Microsoft Azure, as you can see, I'm just browsing to that resource. I don't need to connect and disconnect from another network. I'm not backhauling any traffic. Single connection, the policy allows it, and the user now gets full access to any resource they want and they require. Um, so the last demo uh, will show something very unique, and I spoke about the optimization for Office 365. Uh, as you know, when you go to, uh, you take your business applications from your physical data center to Office 65, it means that the, the data is now located further away. And there are a lot of implications uh, to what happens to performance. In our demo, we have sites uh, in Frankfurt, in Singapore, and in China. And they need to access the same Office 365 instance located in North America. And this is actually a, a, a real demo of environment that we created. On the bottom left, you can see the Kato management application. Currently, only our headquarter in Chicago is connected to the Kato cloud. So we have users in Germany, China, and Singapore, which are now off the network. You can see that they are not connected. We're going to browse to uh, uh, SharePoint on Office 365 and download a large file. This is a, uh, it can be an email, a large email, it can be a whatever. Just for the, the, the sake of this demo, I'm, I'm downloading a very uh, a 500 uh, 
uh, megabit uh, file from SharePoint. You can see that the, since I'm going over the internet, the performance without Kato is 800 uh, kilobytes per second in Germany. It was very low uh, in comparing to the actual bandwidth that I had on those sites because I'm using the public internet. I will connect to Kato using all those clients. You can see on the Kato management application, the user is now connected with VPN. Uh, and I will try to download the file again now when I'm on the Kato network via the Kato backbone. You can see that the performance in Germany is seven times faster, and in China, 20 times faster, and in Singapore, 44 times faster than the public internet. And this performance improvement happens because of all the optimization, the TCP proxy, the folder correction, and the fact that we're dropping the traffic right in front of your Office 365 instance. So this is a very cool demo that to showcase and showcase and demonstrate our capability, uh, which means Kato versus the public internet. So, um, I, Thank you very much for listening until now. It, this kind of, we, we gave an overview uh, of our whole solution and we try to, to, to demonstrate the mobile capabilities and how we solve all those challenges of accessing applications, protecting everything and, and being able to control your network. And we've reached our, um, almost the end of the, our webinar. We have another poll and a Q&A next. So Bonnie, back to you. Ophir and Adrian, thank you guys for a great presentation. Like Ophir said, if you had questions, we'll soon start with the Q&A session. But before that, let's run our last poll. Would you be interested in a free estimate of your networking and security cost reduction using Cato? You can feel free to answer now and I'll leave this open during the Q&A session. Let's see, we have some great questions. Uh, first question. Can I have acceleration for office-based users or just mobile users? So, yes, as I, as I mentioned, um, and I actually showed it on uh, one of the slides that showed the, the backbone of Cato and how user connects to the pop, traffic goes from then optimized on the middle mile all the way to the either a cloud or physical location. So if you just replace the mobile user uh, with a physical location, with a socket, or with a, an IPsec tunnel created that connects him to the nearest pop, basically you get optimization for uh, for physical location as well. But it's, it goes further or more than what I just said. It's uh, if you decide to go with our uh, SD WAN device with our with the Kato socket, it allows you to do a lot more. Um, and we have a lot of uh, materials on our website and we talk a lot about our SD1 capabilities and how we optimize your physical location, uh, all the scenarios of hybrid cloud, more users um, uh, connect or sites connecting to resources around the world, global or regional location. So the answer is, is definitely yes, we're optimizing your physical location, your mobile users uh, traffic, end-to-end -end on uh, on our network. Okay, great. Next question, what happens if one of your pops fail? Will my mobile users in that area lose access? Okay, so everything in our network was designed uh, for the cloud and everything is redundant. And, and obviously the network can grow uh, a lot more than what it is today to uh, accumulate and serve thousands of customers and all our customers around the world. But in regards to what happens if one of the pop fails, we have internal redund redundancy in each one of our pops. So um, when you say a pop fails, it means that a multiple uh, computing power within the pop needs to fail. So it's not something that can happen uh, regularly. So it is a really disaster to actually uh, fail, that one of our pops fail. But if some disaster like that do happen, uh, what's going to happen is that our the Kato client or the Kato socket that connects you to the Kato pop will realize that the Kato went down and they will decide and choose another pop that is closer to them and they will just route the traffic. So uh, ultimately the users will not feel any downtime to their uh, activity. 
Okay, great. Um, we're running a little bit kind of short on time, so we have time for one last question. Can I use split tunnel with your solution? Do you recommend it? Yes, split tunnel is something that we support on our on our clients. Um, so the, the way it works, you can configure um, which traffic you want to route via, via the, Cato, the Cato network right? um, when users connect. We have some customers who chose, um, for example, only to route their business traffic. Uh, it can be their cloud uh, applications or Office 365 data uh, because they didn't want to, to see personal uh, traffic from the users. So split tunnel allows you to decide which traffic goes via Kato and which one will go uh, directly to the internet, uh, where, wherever the user is. Um, and it really depends on the, uh, the company policy. Um, we obviously recommend um, all traffic to go through us because on, on top of the connectivity, of the WAN connectivity to the business application, the user also gets the, the security on top. So anti-malware, IPS, um, URL filtering for malicious websites, uh, application control, all those capabilities allows, uh, allow you to control the user and protect them uh, on the go. Okay, great. Thank you, Ophir. And if we didn't get to your question, we'll have somebody follow up with you. Um, I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us today. And of course, Adrian and Ophir, thank you guys. To our audience, you guys will all receive an email with a link to view this webinar within a couple of days. And we look forward to meeting you again in our next one. Thank you.